Oh, look, he's adjusting it. It's straight. It does here. Isn't I mean, it doesn't look it. It, does, it really does not look straight. No, it is. Yeah. Camera wise. Then again, apparently neither do we. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> So, so, we had a chat in the office a couple of weeks ago. I mean, OK, we have today as well, but I'm talking about a specific chat we had. Okay. Specifically, where we were looking at code like this. So right. we got, got your old scripty tag here. Script, scripty tag, script always tag. good. A couple of variables in there. Mm -hmm. A var, a const, all right, cool. And again, but, but this time, it's, it's a module. It's a module. All right. And then. The question we were posing each other is, is like, well, what 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 can be accessed? What is available in the third script tag, which in this case is a module tag? Ex well, okay. Now the only reason it's a module tag, right? Okay, you, you're now making me go on a tangent already. The only reason it's a module <laughs> you're tag welcome. is because if it was a normal script tag, they, these would not run in this order. Oh, because modules are deferred by implicitly. Yes. So if if it was a script tag with defer. Um, it's, what is ig it's ignored. Oh, because it's inline. Yep. Defer is ignored on inline script tag. Yes, it is. Today you learned. There we go. <laughs> so Good tangent. Now we've got that out of the way. Yes, the only reason I've put type module on this so is. So you have a good order. So they actually they... execute in order they appear on the snippet, right? Exactly. Good. So you actually did a, a Twitter poll. I did, did a Twitter poll. It was not, quite... the, not the, like this exactly, but related. Very similar. It yeah. had some, some of the same things. Uh, and we thought, oh, do an episode. Yeah, like I wanted to write the, I wanted to tweet the story. I did a poll 24 hours, I wanted to tweet the solution. And Many I said, people, no. No, you don't. That's precious content. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to that content. And Otherwise, I will we have take to come up with it again. And so this time, we actually have like semi good content. Exactly. Exactly. So well, well, let's. <laughs> Let's not say let that. Let the let's audience let's, decide. Yes, let's let's let the comments decide if this is actually. Oh, any don't good. let the comments decide, mate. Oh, okay. Right. So, um, I figured like to, let's start by talking about um, how scoping works in JavaScript. Yeah, I mean that's really what this that is all about. Exactly. Okay. Uh, but we'll go back to the start. So back in olden times, ye olde JavaScripty. This is like ES three. ES three level, time. Right? The only way you could create a variable was with var. Yes, and which is good because that's what var stands for—a variable. It is, uh, but you could also create functions. Yeah, that was Shock, in ES3 shocking. as well. <laughs> yeah, we had those, uh, but they behaved in very, very similar ways. So, a var or a function would be scoped to the parent function mm -hmm. or the global if there wasn't one. Right. So here we got one. And that's the two boundaries that there existed at the time: like you had a function or you had the global. Hold on to that. Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Um, so we've got yes, yeah, so var one there is on the global, mm -hmm. two on the global, mm -hmm. and we've got three. It's in a function, <gasps> so it's scoped to the function, and four is also scoped within two. So like you, know, you, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't call four out of here; it's, that wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, so if you did something like this, if you did var five inside a, a, an if, yes, uh, and a function six, they would actually now exist in within two. Within two, yeah. so you'd be able to log them because blocks were just work. not. A scoping mechanism. So, you could naively say that the only thing that has a scope in JavaScript in this era was a function or the mm -hmm. global. That's what I would have. Said. It is what you would have said. There are two cases where that was not true, and still isn't true. Mm, okay. More so, and so I, I will give you a clue. It's like th these are not places that you can create variables as such. But there are places where an identifier has a scope which is smaller than a function. Oh, that's oddly. The phrasing was so oddly specific. Well, I'm trying to help, um, and I love I love like putting you on the spot. I do this a lot in the videos, I mean, and it's stuff that I wouldn't get either. Technically, what about for loops? Go back. If I had to for var i equals zero, is that i available after the for loop? Yes, it is. So that would go mm. up into the parent scope. And uh, we've, we've done a video about Well, that was less than const, right? Less so const. I wasn't sure if that was also some weirdness. No. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. um. I thought this was going to be a short video, but I think now we should just sit here until we get <laughs> until it. name every <laughs> bit of construct in ES3. Sh shall I just tell you? Yeah, come on. Because I wouldn't have got this either. Go on, then. Um, uh, catch. The error. Try catch was a thing. Y yes, we had that. <laughs> we had that in olden days as well. Thank okay. you very much. Um, so, but this error identifier is only available in the catch. 
Interesting. OK. Um, and I, so this bit I did know, or I, what I, I knew Catch had like, a scope associated with it. But it actually, because I'd heard that, it misled me to think that variables would be scoped within it. They're not. You can do a so variable in here. Those, again, yeah. would bubble up to the yes. outer function or scope. Well, but okay. the error is stays within the catch block. OK. And the other one, which I will forgive you for not knowing, is width. Is that still a thing? Well, it was in ES3. I, I think. Is, me, is it still a thing? I think in strict mode, it stops you using it, but don't hold me to that. What does width even do? Right. What it will do is, is it, it just, will. It's just like a replacement for scope block, a block scope. Well, so it will take all of the properties of object mm -hmm. and create local variables for them inside the width oh. block, but only inside the width block. So it is, uh, I believe, and again, don't hold me to this, uh, I believe it's the only thing in JavaScript where the, the the variables that can exist within it are not deterministic. Like you can't just do it at parse. You can't figure that out at parse time. I guess the other mm. part is eval. And, Fair. But, about. and that's why both of these things, like if you're using eval, if you use with, a lot of the performance optimizations that engines have just go out the window. Yeah. Because they can't. The fact that the syntax that like, got this, you know, means that it's it's a thing. It is a thing. It is a thing. So that's the two things that have a, a different scope. All right. Um, but then, right? Oh, yes. Special behavior. Special magic behavior. Oh, boy. If, oh, is this the hoisting? Uh, no, this is not the hoisting. The hoisting is like, oh, so it's going to be a short video. <laughs> no, I'm not going to talk about hoisting. People can search we, hoisting. I think we talked about hoisting once. Fine, good. Hoist. We'll just put a, it's one of my favorite words. Hoist. Hoisting. Hoist. Hoisting Hoist. source. If you have a global uh, variable with var or function, mm -hmm. it does a magic thing in that it will also well, it will put it on the global object. How's that magic? I thought that's the thing. That is, on, that is the global, right? Well, you say that, but that's only because you're used to it, right? It's actually weird. Come on. It is weird. It's weird. But I thought that's just, that's just the whole premise of JavaScript. You have this, that your global scope is also tied to a specific identifier. But maybe that's just me coming into JavaScript too late, where all these things have already been figured out. Well, hold on to that. <laughs> uh, I would say, just as an aside, Yep. So self is referring to that the, the, the global object. That's what it is in the browser. Yes. Um, you also have window. Uh, that's only in Windows. But you're currently yeah. talking ES3, right? Because this is already different. In well, no. The, your, your global object is, is self today. Your global object is window if you're in a, a document. Global is the global in Node. And the new bit is global this, which is trying try, to standardize try, try. across all of those. Because it turns out we couldn't standardize on any one of these because people use it to detect I what environment was a, they're running there was in. a case where self and window might not be equal. Maybe I'm wrong. That's not. That's not. That's, that's not. No, that's I, not. I definitely don't know off the top of my head. OK. So uh, yeah, so this is the magic case. It's, it's weird and magic that it that stuff in the is, global is self goes on still there. window yes. in module script tags? Yes. OK. And I'm wrong. That much I know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we got some new stuff. We got new stuff. New JavaScript stuff mm -hmm. arrived. Along with var, we got some new ones, const and let, which yep. we, we talked about on the show before. And these have more sensible scoping, should we say. <laughs> more, like, yeah, less unorthodox. It, specifically, block level scoping. Yeah. So inside this if, as we've already seen, one is going to be thrown in, into the parent scope, yeah. be it a function or a global, whereas two will only exist inside the, the if block. Set. And same with three. Mm -hmm. And that's right. true for while, for Pretty doom. much any curly braces, right? In fact, you can do that. Ah, see, there you go. And there you go. And it works. So that's kind of how you think about it. If it's got the curly braces, two and three are going to do the right thing inside right. there. So I've, uh, I was playing around, and it suddenly occurred to me, yeah. what's going to happen there? This should not throw. This should. I think this this will work. What do you think will happen? Because the var one will bubble up to the containing scope, which yep. might be the function of the global scope, yep. and then the const one will shadow that yep. because shadowing is a thing anyway. Yeah. No. Oh. That is not what happens. <laughs> uh, I, and genuinely, when I thought about this, I didn't know. Um, and mm. I agree with you. Like runtime, this could be a thing, um, but it, it fails at parse time. It Ooh. sees two identifiers being declared within the same scope, even though var will do something slightly All differently. Right. And it so will it will throw. actually throw? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. And I guess it might be down to that if you have const 1 in a block, yeah. you cannot 
previous to that refer to one in a parent scope. It will tell you you are trying to use the thing before it is declared. So I think that's where this comes I from. I see. But if I move the var, var outside the curly braces, that's fine. That's yeah. fine, right? Yeah, that's fine. Interesting. OK. Yeah. yeah. So there we go. That's, that was a pointless piece of information, but it's something I learned while making the slides for this. <laughs> um, so I guess the first part of the question, really, is we've, got, we've kind of seen these vars. We've seen these mm -hmm. consts things. But across two script tags, how does, how does they work? How, yeah, how does how, it? How does they work? Um, one goes onto the global, as we've seen. Yeah, we are pretty sure about one at this point. It works. Two is already slightly a bit more questionable. Yes. So you could also do self one, fair enough. And yes, the questionable one is two. That was a good sentence to say, wasn't it? <laughs> questionable one is two. Questionable, the, the one that is questionable is two. <laughs> No, there's no good way of saying that. No, I, do you know what? I went to back and forth on the variable naming here between just doing A, B, C, and D, or 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I felt like I'd done the right thing. Now I realize I did not. No. OK, it's very confusing. Well, it's better than foobar buds. So that's what I started with, and I ran out. <laughs> <laughs> foobar, yo, I mean, there's, biz, there's crooks and all. Uh, I, I don't remember. That's I don't it. remember after that. Especially useless tangent. So <laughs> um, two. The thing is, I did the quiz. I looked at the solution. I don't remember. Really? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Excellent. So when you do const2 at the top level, like var, it goes on the global scope. It goes on the global okay. scope. OK, cool. So this works, because the two scripts share a global scope. Mm -hmm. So uh, contrary to what I think most people on Twitter believed, a script tag is not equivalent with like curly braces. It's not a scope. Exactly. Correct. But this is where things get different. Right. Yes, I remember now. And this is so, yes, it too does go on the global in terms of like ECMAScript. It yep. is a global. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't do the weird, you know, hooking right. it into the global object. Because technically, the Something. global object is under the actual global context, it Ye seems like. That's how I understood Yang, one of our V8 engineers who wrote an explanation. Yes, yes, and sort of. <laughs> um, the, it, in some ways, the, the global that 1 and 2 exist on are the same. In some ways, they are. In some ways, they aren't. Because the same again, like if you did var 1 equals true and var uh, const 1 equals true, like you could think if they're, if they're sitting at a different level, it should all be fine. But it's not. It's it not. will stop you from doing no, that. They're both so it's on one the... global. Right. Uh, except so one. I guess then that, that it actually is magic, like you said, that the 1 gets additionally patched into the global object, which yes. is something else from the global context. Yes, there's this kind of object record thing yeah. uh, in, in ECMAScript, and that's, that's how that works. So yes, so there we go. One works, self.1 works, two works, self.2 will be undefined. It will be undefined. So there we go. OK. Um, but da, 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 da. what happens here? What changes? Well, I did know that module scripts don't bubble up to the global. You're sort of right. The if you create yeah, the, it's imagine that they're wrapped in a function, right? Right. So, so if you I just have a free floating var in a script module tag, that will not end up on the global context or the global object. Correct. So it will. You still have access to the global. Like you can of still course. access documents and blah, 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 But blah. if you want to put something on the global, you have to do it manually and explicitly. Right? Absolutely. Right. That is true. Uh, so that I guess takes us to to this the question. The, from, quest, the question. Question from, I had a teacher who used to say question used to wind me up. I mean, it's, it's just wrong, isn't it? And do you know what? As a teacher, you say that word a lot. Yep. And so it's really frustrating. This question. All right. So we know now that 1 and 2 will be that will, oh, no, not, now I know that. <laughs> ah, it, it, well, it, let's do the rest uh, of the episode uh, without uh, actually uh, saying uh, proper uh, words. Uh, That's fine. Uh, uh, ah, hmm. All right. So 1 yeah. and 2 are on. The global context. The global context. So, but no, these the lookups also happen on the global context. So this will work. So one, one, and two and one two. works. Cell phone Self works. One works. Two works. Self dot two will be undefined. Self dot two will be undefined for the the reasons we did before, because it's mm -hmm. even though it's in a script module, it accesses it in the usual way. Um, that will throw. That will absolutely throw. Yes. I pause to remember. <laughs> yes, because we treat module as if it's wrapped in a, a function. It's got its own kind of 
So yeah, this will actually be an undeclared variable. Undeclared variable. While self dot three would be still undefined would because still be undefined. that's different. That doesn't throw. Looking up an, an a property is fine. Yeah. So it'd be undefined. Yeah, it wouldn't throw. For same. Would also throw. Yeah. And that is it. That is how scopes work in JavaScript. I mean, you say like there now you understood all the patterns. Like if if you rely, on, I just want to be clear. If you rely on variables being passed in between script tags implicitly, probably well, a bad pattern. There, there are cases you would do this, because like, if you've got a, um, a, like you're doing a server render thing, but you yep. also want to dump the initial set of data into a script right. tag, that is somewhere where you will but want to do. I'm saying that if you want to do that, make it explicit. Write self dot blah, blah, blah equals. Oh, interesting. Yeah, OK. Because like, don't rely right. on these implicit rules, because then everybody will look at this and have to think, oh, I don't remember how the details were of these global context scoping rules. I, w I would actually agree with that. I think the whole thing about, well, th th there's a reason why const2 doesn't end up on the global object, because it's weird. And right? also, we, we kind of want to stop the, the putting everything on the global object, right? Because it's yes. been kind of polluted over time anyway. Yeah. So let's only make that happen when it's a conscious choice by the developer to actually write down self dot equals yep. then fine. And that's and we do see that with future JavaScript as well. Um, things like async functions, generators, all yep. of that, their functions, they still behave like functions, but class behaves more like constant let. Yeah. And that it will be like block scoped and not do the the, the global oh, I didn't thing know that. as well. Interesting. Um, it's something I looked up on the train this morning thinking, so I might ask that, so I better <laughs> better know <laughs> my stuff. You didn't ask that, so I just thought I'd crowbar that little fact <laughs> in so I feel like fulfilled. Right. Did you use all your knowledge you looked up now? Is there something else you want to sprinkle in? That is all the knowledge I had to uh, give you in this episode. Done. Thank you very much for this insightful report. I kind of getting used to wearing my glasses for this shoot, and now I'm wondering if at what point I can confidently pull out the Russell and go like, <laughs> you feel that? Well, that's what I've noticed, actually. With I've got, because um, I wear glasses, at, you know. You have the, 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 I've got the two the, things. The stripes of doom. Yeah. They're really, my new glasses are actually really harsh like that. But, and, and so I've been thinking, like, if I just keep wearing them, then, then it's, it'll get better. <laughs>